Welcome, my name is Maddie Crowley. I'm a senior field marketing specialist here at Bluebeam. Thanks everyone for joining us today to learn about the top five game-changing features in Bluebeam Review. Out in Chicago, we have our technical account manager, Matt Beaumont. Hi everyone. He's gonna be showing us how it's done today. Um, we have a few people helping us out on questions through the chat box, including Molly, Matt, Kevin, Chris, Andrew, lots of people, great team today. So feel free to throw your questions into the chat box for them at any time. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and you'll also get an email with the recording link tomorrow and you can download a copy of the presentation deck in the handout section. All right, let's get started. So our agenda includes going over a little bit about Bluebeam as a company, um, a review of what we'll learn today, details on the top five game-changing features, um, the how-to in review from Matt, plus best practices from a newly released case study, and of course, some live Q&A at the end. So at Bluebeam, we empower people to advance the way the world is built. Um, at Bluebeam Review is our flagship solution, which helps teams simplify complex processes and collaborate in real time to finish projects on schedule and under budget. We take a customer-centric approach to product development, working closely with industry partners to design simple, smart solutions that save time and money. Bluebeam was founded in Pasadena, California, which is where I am here today. And as the industry has grown, so have we. Bluebeam has since opened additional offices in San Diego, Chicago, Dallas, Manchester, London, Stockholm, and Munich. So we'd like to get to know a little bit about you and who's logged on today to join us. So we'd love to know, do you currently own a license of review? Um, this way we can speak to a little bit about um, if you've known review for a long time, if you know um, our product and have a license versus maybe you're just getting started and maybe you've downloaded a trial. Um, we'd like to be able to help you out no matter where you are in the customer journey and um, perfect, great, great responses. Okay. So it looks like we have um, lots of people who know Bluebeam, lots of people who um, have experienced review um, and a few people who are new. So we're happy you've come to join us. Great. So. Um, Bluebeam Review is something that really helps maximize your productivity, and that's the theme of today. Um, we're going to be talking about how Bluebeam has partnered with people like you to build a solution with industry-specific tools that help our customers gain a competitive edge. Our goal is to empower you to innovate and find new ways of solving age-old problems. And at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to utilize each of these five features to maximize your productivity and actually improve your project predictability at the same time. So we're going to start with advanced markups. This is how you can communicate effectively with project stakeholders, as well as the tool chest to create a process of standardization that is repeatable from one project to the next. Then we're gonna talk about the markups list to track markups and comments made throughout a project's life cycle. And number four is studio sessions to allow real-time collaboration amongst all project partners. And then we'll have last but not least, document comparison and overlay pages, which helps you save time comparing differences between drawings. So we actually have another follow-up question. Um, just wanna get another sense of where you're at with your teams and maybe what your biggest challenge is with um, maximizing new technologies. So this question allows you to answer um, more than one question, um, whether it's standardizing a process, um, lack of company subject matter expert, lack of training resources, or maybe a resistance to current processes. Great, thank you so much. Okay. So um, thanks so much for responding to that. And Matt is actually gonna help you with all those different pain points. Um, and he's gonna introduce to you Bluebeam Review. Matt, take it away. There's, uh, we're gonna address all those challenges uh, today in, in a variety of different ways. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that we're on the same page as our project partners. Uh, with Bluebeam Review, you can leverage the common file format of PDF to collaborate across teams. Review is purpose designed for the AEC industry to allow for greater collaboration and efficiency anytime, anywhere. Specifically, review will help you reduce repetitive processes so you can focus on what really matters. Shave time off schedules by improving efficiency, collaborate in real time across the globe with anyone, and get the job done on time and on budget. Architects, engineers, contractors, and owners around the world 
would use review to stay connected throughout the entire project cycle. So with that being said, let's jump into review. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. Uh, you should all see review right now. Uh, so Maddie mentioned for our first top five game-changing feature of review, we're gonna look at advanced markups. Now, many of you are already using review, uh, so you might be taking some measurements or making some comments, uh, but there's actually some additional advanced functionality behind our markups that even our most experienced review users aren't aware of. So for the first advanced markup feature that I wanna take a look at today, uh, I have this takeoff uh, PDF open, so an example of doing takeoffs and measurements, and I'm gonna zoom in on this office space as an example. So right here we have an office, it's not quite rectangular. We have some uh, interesting curves right here, curved corners. And let's say we wanted to take an area measurement of it or a perimeter, and we need to do both of those things. Now we can go to our traditional measurement tools by going to tools, measure, and you can see length, poly length, area, perimeter, those types of things. But this is kind of a unique space uh, because of its shape that it'd be kind of tedious to use those more conventional measurement methods. So for the first advanced markup tool, we're gonna go with something called dynamic fill. And what dynamic fill will allow us to do is to kind of place a paint bucket and drop paint into a space, find that PDF content uh, to do it quickly and take actually multiple measurements at the same time. To get to dynamic fill, I'm gonna go up to tools measure dynamic fill down here at the bottom and when i do that you can see a new toolbar is opening up now i will say before you take any measurements on your pdf oh we have a full webinar that's great guys welcome and i'm getting all these messages popping up okay i'm excited about that uh before you take any measurements on the pdf uh what you should do is calibrate your scale. This is really important. That's why I'm looking directly in the camera when I say it. Uh, just for the sake of time here, I have already calibrated my scale. And what I'm gonna do is just use my paint bucket here. And you can see that I'm filling that space in. And you can see it's starting to hug that PDF content, if you will. And as I get to that door, it's gonna find the door. And you'll notice the door's open, right? So if I go past it, it's gonna spill out a little bit. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to put a little boundary just to tell the program that, hey, uh, this is actually the edge of my PDF content. I'm going to do that, and then I'm just going to fill in this little nub there. Okay, so we want to apply multiple measurements here. I'm going to do an area. I can also do poly length, perimeter, and volume. There's also some non-measurement markup capabilities. You can apply a a polygon markup. And then there's also the ability to create a space from here. In this example, I'm just gonna do the area and perimeter at the same time. And once I have those selected, I can hit apply. So now it's creating two unique markups. I have my 202 square feet and I have my 58 feet, five inches for the perimeter, uh, both created really quickly and really easily. If you have questions about dynamic fill or any other features we may cover today, please type those into the chat window. Um, I'm also gonna provide a link to learn more about dynamic fill in the chat window as well. So there's a lot behind the scenes there, so definitely uh, read up on that. Okay, I'm gonna close out of here. Now for our next advanced markup tool that we're gonna go over, I'm gonna switch gears and move over to our issues PDF here. In the issues file, I have an example of a bat, batch, uh, excuse me, a punch list and back check uh, workflow that we are going through. And what I'm excited about showing here is the fact that when we're documenting existing site conditions these days, there's a lot of new tools that are available to us. Now, previously in review, we've had the ability to attach videos and photos directly to a markup. But one of the new event technologies that are being seen more and more on site is the uh, ability to take 360 degree photos. And we've also added that to the capture gallery. So I wanna show that as the next advanced markup tool. 
I'm just gonna zoom in here. And I'm just gonna take a simple text box. And I'm just gonna make a note. It says document existing conditions. So nothing too clever, um, but obviously it doesn't say much. Uh, let me just customize this so you can see it a little bit better. Make it blue. Okay, so it doesn't really tell much. Uh, and we know that a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, I can't even tell you how much a 360 degree photo is worth. So uh, we'll take a look. So if we want to attach that photo, we're gonna right click on the markup itself and go to capture. And we have two options. Uh, we can attach a photo or video directly from our camera. And this will allow us to do just the flat uh, photos, not the 360 photo. Uh, but we can use our device's camera. So if you're on site with your laptop or if you're using the review iPad app, you can be using those devices camera to document your existing conditions. Um, or we can attach one of those things from a file on our computer. So I'm gonna do that for the 360 photo. You can see here, I have it ready right there. Click open. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see this little icon up here. Uh, that tells us that there's a capture gallery associated with the markup. And if I change this and move it around, uh, they will go with the markup. And then when I click on it, it will open up the capture gallery and you can see that the 360 photo has been processed. I can spin around and I can zoom in and see a lot of detail about what's going on in the field. So a great way to share that information with your project collaborators. Awesome. Now for the, the last advanced markup tool that I'm gonna to highlight today, uh, I'm gonna to stay on this file. Now you'll notice, I mentioned that's a punch list and back check uh, process that we're going through. So we have a lot of these little punch keys that have been created. Now as someone that was on site and placing these on the page, I may know what, they're, uh, what they mean. And if I hover over them, you can see that there's additional information like EI represents incomplete switch installation. But if I'm sending this to someone less familiar, like an owner or my client or something like that, they, be, they may not be familiar with this. And I wanna convey the information behind these markups in a simple way. And that's why I'm gonna to point to Legends as our next advanced markup tool. So let me zoom out here and get to a, some clean space. So to create a legend, I'm just gonna go and I'm going to select a bunch of markups here. And one of the ways that we can create a legend is to just right click on those selected markups and say legend, create new legend. And I'm just gonna place that on the page. Let's find a nice white area. There we go. So you can see based on the symbols that I selected, I've created this legend to provide additional data about those different markups. You can see we have a little preview uh, of the symbol, a description, a count of how many of those symbols are located on the page. And we also have this unit column. Now I should mention that the legend feature is not something you only have to use for tracking field issues. Uh, anytime you're taking markups and you wanna convey what those custom markups mean is a good time to use a legend. So for instance, if I flip back to this takeoff, uh, file, you can see that we have a couple legends in there providing the counts of different measurements. So as a result, we want to make sure that the information shown in the legend is applicable to the workflow that we're doing. So I'm actually going to turn on uh, some different columns here from my properties toolbar. Now I don't really need the unit. I'm not actually taking uh, counts. So I'm just going to erase unit. Um, and I want to turn on status that tells me, you know, where in the process those issues are being addressed. And then also comments for a little more detail. And when I click on that, you can see that the legend is showing quite a bit more information. So I know specifically what those issues represent and actually the status of a few of them. And a few others haven't had a, a status assigned to it. So again, we're gonna have additional information both on 360 photo capture and legends in the chat bar so you can learn more. Uh, so feel free to click on that link. And then um, we're gonna move on now to our next top five game changing feature. There's actually a couple ways about going about creating these legends. I mentioned uh, just selecting the markups you want in there. Well, another way we can create a legend is through our tool sets. 
and we access our tool sets in the tool chest. So if you see on your, uh, maybe it's on your left side, your panel access bar, uh, you'll see this tool chest icon. You can also hit, I believe it's Alt X to get to your tool chest. And when I open it up, you can see I have a variety of custom tools waiting for me. And that's the idea behind the tool chest is that this is a place where I can go quickly to get to my custom tools so I can reuse them. Um, now you may be saying, well, I have a favorite spar in my Windows Explorer or, or Internet Explorer or wherever, that's not that game changing. What makes this so special though, is literally looking back at those challenges we saw and that's the ability to standardize our processes. And the tool chest helps us do that because we can work consistently day to day, but we can also share these tool sets so other people can work in the same manner and they can also work quickly. And that's where you're gonna see really big productivity increases. So in order to do that, let's take a closer look at the tool chest. Now you'll notice that there's these different tool sets here, these different categories are tool sets. And these are actually different, they're actually files that live on my uh, computer. And because they're files, we can change them. So let's take that comment that I made earlier about document existing conditions. I'm just gonna drop that into this tool set as an example. Um, and now that I've changed it, just like any other file that's been changed, I can save it. And that will ensure that other people, um, or excuse me, um, that every time I open up review, uh, those tools will be there waiting for me. Now you'll notice I also have the export button. So if I wanna start sharing these tool sets that I've built with my colleagues, and make sure that they're consistent with how we're uh, setting up our workflows, uh, you can export it then that will allow you to attach the file to an email, for instance. You can attach it to another PDF. You can also um, save it to a shared location where they can reference it. And so do that. You'll also notice in the dropdown, there's that legend option. So if I wanna create a legend from my tool set, I can go here as well. Okay, so let's say though that uh, I'm not the one that's creating the tool sets. One of my colleagues is doing that and they wanna share it with me. How do I go about bringing that into review? Well, there are a couple ways to go about it. Uh, two of them, you can go up to tool chest and you'll see a drop down for manage tool sets. Uh, and manage tool sets, when I click on that in the dialog window, uh, you can see the tool sets that are already in the tool chest. And then we have an option to import the tool set. When I do that, importing will allow me to have a locally cached copy of the tool set I brought in. So uh, if I make changes to it, uh, they'll be there when I log into review, but no one else is seeing those changes. So I'm not sharing it with the rest of my team. In order to share it with my team though, I'm gonna go to add. When I click on add, uh, you'll notice there's new. This is where I can create a tool set completely from scratch. But to bring in and reference a shared tool set, I'm gonna to go to existing. And then I can choose the file. Uh, so I have one built out here, architects review. When I click on that, you can see the file path in there and I'm gonna click okay. And that's also been added to uh, my tool set there. So let me click okay. And you can see that that now appears down at the bottom and I can make this a little bit bigger for everyone. There's that new tool set. You'll notice that there's a lock. So if I'm gonna make any changes, I need to unlock the tool set so accidents don't happen. And I'm just gonna click and drag just to show that we can add tools to it, lock it back up, save it. Well, it's been locked, so it's saved. Um, so then everyone else that's also referencing the tool set in the same way is also getting that changes. And again, we're, we're quickly adapting, revolving, and we're being more productive. Um, one other thing I should mention about saving tool sets, um, your tool chest and the tool sets you see in there are associated, can be associated with a, a profile. Um, profiles are pre-saved interfaces with custom settings and custom tools associated with them. To get to your profiles, I'm gonna go up to review here and you'll see profiles here. Now, the review comes with four standard profiles. You're not just stuck with these four, you can create your own profiles like you would create your own tool sets. And you can also change these tool sets and save them. And you can also then share them with your colleagues. So 
you know, thinking bigger, it's not just the tools you're say, uh, sharing, it's your interface, like how your toolbars and things like that are set up. So cool, definitely check that out. So uh, again, type questions into the, the chat window. I'm sure uh, people's fingers are busy uh, answering those questions. Um, and also we'll provide a link to learn more about the tool chest. Now, looking back at this legend, you may have been wondering, okay, I see all this information in the legend, but where is that information coming from? I mentioned briefly that markups actually contain a lot of data, even if it's not readily apparent on the drawing itself. Um, so we want to be able to access and use that data in, in different ways. Um, so legend does that, um, but if you really want to organize and track all this data, we're going to look at our third game-changing feature of review, and that's the markups list. The markups list is down at the bottom of the page. Uh, you can access it through this uh, menu looking button or you can hover and see the blue beam down at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna click on that and you can see that the markups list has now popped up. Like I mentioned, the markups list is where we can organize and track all the markup information that we're placing on the page. Um, so you can see here, we have quite a few markups. When I click on the first one, it will actually take it take me to that location on the page. Um, but there's a lot of data that's uh, clearly listed here. I have uh, just a subject, so a quick description of the, of the markup. Um, the page label, so where in the file is it located, a specific comment about this markup, who made it, so my colleague who spectacularly jumped in there when I was muted, <laughs> and your Q&A master of ceremonies there, Molly Weber. Uh, when she made that comment. Looks like I've been using this file for a while here. And then we can also do things like set statuses, so which is very helpful in the field issue workflow. I can say, hey, this has actually been uh, closed. And you can even see that the uh, markup changed color there with a custom status. We have a layer column, so we can assign markups specifically to layer and spaces, which is more of an advanced feature for things like the uh, field issues workflow. Now, you're not relegated to just these columns. There's a lot more information lying behind the scenes. So uh, depending on what kind of workflow you wanna do, you may wanna turn on different columns. To do that, we're gonna go to markups list, columns. And you can see like, for instance, if I were doing takeoffs, I might wanna turn on some uh, for the measurements. So I have length, area, wall area, volume, uh, measurement sequence, things like that, that I might want on there. Um, but these are the standard columns that you can choose from, but there's actually more that you can do. We can actually assign custom information to our markups. To do that, I'm gonna go down to manage columns and go to custom columns. So for in this particular workflow, it's not just enough to track the issues on site. I need to assign them to people to make sure that they're actually resolved. Uh, so I'm gonna create a custom column called responsibility. Uh, there's a multiple uh, different types of custom columns that I can create. Uh, text would work fine here, but let's go through these. You can also do a check mark, a choice, which will be like a drop-down menu, date if you want to assign dates, formula, number, and again, text. So formula is going to be good for doing some simple arithmetic across columns, and number will allow you to type in a number. Like I said, text will work fine, but I actually want to do a drop down menu because I want to sign these to the same people um, over and over again. So I'm going to create the first choice of my colleague, Sue. Next one will be Bob. And the next one will be Kim, all my favorite three lettered colleagues. Now uh, I'll click OK. I have that responsibility column. If I hit OK, it will appear in my markups list. But you may already be noticing that I have an import and export button here, which means just like the tool set, I can share these custom columns. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time I open up a new PDF. I just wanna bring those in. So again, I'm consistent and I can save a lot of time. So I'm gonna actually import some custom columns that uh, someone had made for me. And just like that, it will get rid of the ones that I've created up to that point, that's okay. Um, and just like that, I have three new custom columns that I don't have to build from scratch again. So again, saving time there. I'm gonna click OK, and we'll go through those custom columns. They appear here, I can just scroll over. 
there's that responsibility column. Let's do the second one and we'll assign that to, oh, my new colleague, Tom, who I missed before. Uh, we can assign a due date. Hey, Tom, incomplete switch installation. Sounds pretty urgent. Let's get that done by Friday. And then if I have any additional notes, I can type them in here. All right, there we go. So just started standardizing, we're setting statuses, creating custom columns, um, but sometimes you don't want the data to just live in review alone. Uh, you wanna be able to share it in a variety of ways and for different reasons. So what we can do is we actually can create a summary of this markup data. If I go to this drop down here, uh, we can provide a CSV summary or XML summary, which will both allow us to uh, open it up in Excel. Um, so that will allow us to do formulas and manipulate the data in a lot, uh, lot of different ways. We can do a PDF summary, which is gonna be more like a formal report. We can have a, a header in there, have hyperlinks, um, and have it in a much more uh, professional layout. We can also do that by sending it directly to paper. So definitely check those out. Uh, in this file in particular, I took the liberty of creating a PDF summary already. I'm gonna open up my thumbnails tab and you can see that after the floor plan, I have that report. And if I click on it, it will take me to that report page and you can see I have that company header or project header. And then each markup has its own picture preview. These are actually hyperlinked, so I can go back to that location on the page. Um, then going back here. Then we also have the actual column data that we saw in the markups list, so that information there laid out in a much more formal manner. Um, Capture gallery, you can have your own capture gallery report. So the pictures that we saw, the 360 photo I added, that would be included in here as well. So uh, take a look at that. So a lot of, lot of uh, things we can do with the markups list. Again, we're only scratching the surface here. So check out those links to make sure that we, uh, that so you're able to learn more about the markups list and understand the, the full realm of capabilities there. Awesome. Okay, so everything I've done up to this point has been um, basically on, on locally locally saved files. So, um, but we know as as construction evolves, as the industry evolves, you know, people are getting more and more comfortable with putting things in the cloud, and they want to be able to access things uh, on the go, and they want to be more mobile. And so, uh, what we're going to switch gears to next is our fourth game-changing capability of review, and that's Studio Sessions. And Studio Sessions is our cloud-based capability that will allow for real-time collaboration. So that's having multiple people mark up the same files at the same time. I'm gonna close out of these files here. Don't need to save them. And I'm gonna go over to the Studio uh, panel here. And you'll see Studio uh, is kind of that house-looking icon there. And I click on it, it's gonna open up the new panel. I can sign in. Now, I think we said, what was it, four or 5% of attendees are, are new uh, to review or not on a licensed version. That's okay because Studio is actually tied to your email address. It's not tied to your license of review. So if you're on the trial, uh, you can go into Studio, you can create an account uh, based on your email address. And for those that are on a license um, that don't have a Studio account, you can certainly do that too. And what's great about it not being tied to a license is that um, you can access Studio from multiple devices. So you can go from your laptop, your desktop at home, uh, and your review iPad app as well can access Studio. And it will allow you to also invite people that um, may not be using review regularly. So maybe it's a client that you have, um, you can send them a link to Studio and they can download the trial and they can jump into a session and participate. Okay, but I'm gonna log in with my email address here. That's not an active email address, so don't email me there. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so I've opened up Studio here, and Studio is actually broken up into two parts. The first part is Studio Projects, which is like a simple document management system where you can store your project files. That's not just your PDFs. That can be any project file, so your images, specs, um, what have you. It can be in there along with your PDF drawings. We're not gonna talk about that today. We're gonna to talk about the real-time collaboration of studio sessions. 
I have a few sessions that I'm participating in right now. Uh, I created this one for this webinar. I'm just gonna open that up. You can have as many sessions as you want. You can have as many projects you want for your account. Okay, so I have jumped into a session. At the top here, uh, we have all the attendees of the session. Uh, you can see my colleague, Andrew, is currently logged in with me while the other nine or so people are offline. Um, so you can come and go as you please. You can think of it as a virtual conference room where you have multiple people marking up or they leave to get coffee and come back or whatever. And you can really have the session open indefinitely as long as it's active. Uh, just below that, you can see the different files that I have in the uh, studio session. We have a absolute upper limit of 5,000 uh, PDF uh, pages that can be in a session. I don't think we've ever seen one get that big. I should also mention that you can have 500 attendees in one studio session. And I can see that uh, there's some eager people that want to participate in the session as well. That's fantastic. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Uh, but guess what? Not today. Uh, I encourage you to go create your own sessions at home. Um, but this is a restricted session, Bluebeam only. Um, but yeah, go ahead and make your own. Uh, down below that, we have some record, a record of different um, of different activities. So anytime someone leaves a session, joins a session, uh, adds markup, that's being recorded down below. I even have a little chat bar. So I'm just gonna say hello to Andrew who's in there. And he'll see that at the very bottom. Okay. But the idea is that real-time collaboration, being able to see markups happen in real time. So I'm just gonna zoom out and I'm gonna make some markups that Andrew will see and, and hopefully we'll see some from him. I'm just gonna go in here. I love the Cloud Plus tool, probably the most intuitive markup tool that we have. And I'll just, um, you know, gotta think of something clever. I'm on the spot here. So let's take a look at, um, blanking this area. So we're just gonna say, uh, we'll zoom in, verify turn radius. Pretty simple stuff, nothing too clever. You'll see that there's a red dot there just waiting for that markup to be synced to the cloud. And as I zoom out, uh, I should see some things popping in from Andrew. Um, yep, I think I just saw something come down here. That's good. Um, now, there's a lot of fun stuff going on in the session. It's not just seeing those markups happen in real time. What I can do is I can actually um, really speed up the timeline of communication. We see it happening in real time, but what if there's a particularly urgent issue that I want to address? So let's take, for example, this verify number of parking spaces meet zoning code. Big deal, we got to address this right away. You might be thinking, hey, well, I'm just gonna take a screenshot of the, of the markup, paste it into an email and write a description. Okay, well, that's fine. That takes some time though. We have some better options. If we click on the markup and right click and go to alert attendee, we can choose to alert someone. So I'm gonna alert Andrew here. What's gonna happen is uh, he's gonna get an email that says, hey, you've been alerted to a markup in a session. That email will contain a hyperlink that he can click and it will take him directly to the markup. So really cutting down on that timeline of communication. Now, if he's in the session itself, he'll get also a, uh, like a flash will appear here and he'll get a notification. And in that notifications area, he'll be notified and he can click and it will take them to that markup. So a uh, very quick way to notify or to alert someone to something important. Uh, we can see a lot's going on in Andrews in the, in the uh, record here. I think he may have uh, been editing something. So I'll click on that. Uh, looks like he added that one. And I click on that, maybe because I'm already selecting it. There we go. Okay. Oh, he replied to it. I'm sorry. Uh, so he said, looking into it, should find out by 3 p.m. Wow. Andrew is Johnny on the spot. That's fantastic. We're going to get an answer right away on the number of parking spaces that we need. So um, just like you would in a local PDF, that information uh, is tracked in the markups list. And you can see that reply. And Colin has uh, replied to it a few days ago, and Andrew did too. So 
that's really helpful. Okay. Now, another fun thing I like to point out with Studio Sessions is um, a little creepy, maybe. Uh, I call it the NSA function of Sessions, and that's the ability to follow someone. So if I want to see what Andrew's up to, uh, I'm just going to click this little guy next to him and click follow. And what this will allow me to do is see what Andrew is seeing. So you can see his cursor move around. I can see where he's zooming in and out and what he's looking at. So I'm really, uh, yeah, just kind of spying on Andrew. But in all reality, um, he knows that I'm following him. And it's a really great presentation tool. So if I'm on a call and they're like, hey, we need to take a look at this, jump in the session, follow me, and I'll point out what's so important, um, we can do that. So. Um, Andrew's also playing around with a 3D PDF that we have in a session that can be marked up. So you're not just working in 2D anymore. You can do some 3D work uh, in your session as well. So thanks, Andrew. That's great. Okay. So um, again, get uh, into the chat bar. We'll have a link for studio sessions. There's even more behind all that. Uh, if you haven't yet, play around with it. It's a lot of fun. In the office, we use it to plan parties and, and do a lot of other fun stuff. So check it out. Okay, so I'm going to jump out of this session. And now we're going to switch gears and talk about the last but not least game-changing feature of review, and that's the ability to identify changes when we get revised drawings. It's important that we make sure that we're always using the most up-to-date information on our projects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up a floor plan, and then I'm going to uh, open up a revised version of that same floor plan. And I'm going to take a look at these two. And just a little helpful tip is I can split my screens here and I can look at multiple files at the same time, which comes in handy, in particular here, where I can want to compare and contrast to. I can also sync the screens. So uh, whatever I see on this one is going to go to the same location on the other page. Uh, so let's take a look and see if we can find any changes here. Okay, you're already getting the point that this may be a little bit of a tedious process of just zooming around and you know moving your eyeballs back and forth. So we want to be quicker, right? We want to find an automated way that we can identify these changes and make sure that we're picking them up during construction. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to unsplit my screen here. And I'm going to go to the first way that we can go about this, and that's called document comparison. So I'm going to go to documents and then compare documents. And the way that this tool works is that it's actually going to scan both files and really kind of go pixel by pixel to identify what the differences between the two are. Uh, because I have two files already open, they defaulted uh, here. Up top, we have the revision, and then we have the original but you can change what files are, are referenced here. Um, and we're just going to click OK. And so right now it's scanning them. I'm going to take a drink of water. And now you can see that what happened is we have the revised drawing here, and it actually created a third file, a difference file. Screens are split automatically, and it bubbled the differences between the two. So if I look over here, we can see that we added a door uh, in the revision. So this is based on the original, and this is the revision. So a door has been added. I think I saw something in the middle of the page, so I'm just going to pan over. OK, this is a little bit more tricky to kind of determine what's changed, but it looks like you know, my guess is that the width of these rooms got a little bit uh, wider. We moved the walls out. Um, so. Real quickly being able to determine, and then I can go and, and look for more facts and, and understand the situation better, but it really gets us off to a good start. Now, the second way that we can go about this same process is to use the overlay pages function. So let me uh, again unsplit my screen. I'm going to close this difference file. And so what overlay pages is going to do is it's going to act kind of like an old school light table where we're stacking two files directly on top of each other and seeing where those differences uh, pop through. So I'm going to go back to document. I'm going to go to overlay pages. And there's those two files again. I can add some others. I can stack as many as I want. Um, by default, it's going to go with a red and green scheme. And what that means is all the line work in this first file is going to be turned to red. 
and the second file is going to be turned to green. Now, this isn't the best color combination for some folks, so I'm just going to change this to red and blue. So I can change the, the different colors that I want to use. And basically, we're going to stack those on top of each other. These files have been printed consistently, so they should stack right on top of each other. The lines will match up. And you can see where those lines match up, they're going to stay black or maybe a little purple because of red and blue. But we know that there's no differences there. But where the colors shine through, we can quickly identify what the differences are. So um, you can see here we got the wall right there. So it looks like we did move it out, uh, the blue being the original and the red being the revised. So we moved the width there. Uh, there's also different layers for the PDF content. So if I go to my layers tab or layers panel, I should say, I can toggle these on and off. So there's the um, revised and there's the uh, original in blue. So very neat. Um, overlay pages is also being used for systems coordination. So imagine uh, taking RCP, uh, stacking a mechanical drawing in there, a uh, structural drawing, and see how those systems uh, conflict, if there's any conflicts there that need to be addressed, um, and things like that. So uh, definitely check out overlay pages and document comparison. And again, keep those questions coming in the chat window, and we'll also have links for you there. So otherwise, I'm going to pass it back over to Maddie, who's going to talk about some really great opportunities coming up. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, so we have, before we talk about a couple of opportunities, I wanted to make sure we could check in with everyone just to understand, um, so what are the features that we just showed that you all are already using? Maybe you have started using markups list and found some new tips and tricks. Maybe you're already using studio sessions. Great. Document comparison and overlay pages. Awesome. Looks like a lot of you are getting use out of that. And advanced markups and tool chest. Perfect. Great. And you'll see that we do have an option there at the bottom that says, please contact me. I'm interested in purchasing or upgrading. So maybe if you're using a trial or you're interested in looking into some of your purchasing options, we'd be happy to get you in touch with the right team. Great. All right. I'm going to close that there. Okay. So back to um, our next opportunities. So we're going to start with actually our um, annual industry conference. This is XCon. It's going to be in Washington, D.C. from August 27th to 28th. And we have over 80 sessions that have um, lots of different tracks available, including business transformation, Bluebeam Essential, so more like we learned today, and then industry trends. So this is the link you can go and actually see um, all 80 sessions that we're offering and then click to register. It's right around the corner. And so it will say that the registration closes August 2nd, but I just heard we're going to extend it to August 16th. So if you're going already and you want to bring a friend or a colleague, um, we'd be happy to have you all join us. And we're also going to have somebody drop that uh, link into the chat box for you as well. And our next opportunity, if August is a little too close around the corner, um, we have our Bluebeam training day. So this is going to be in Philadelphia on September 26th. Again, registration is limited for this, um, but it's an entire day of hands-on training with our Bluebeam trainers, and we'll cover features we didn't have time to talk about today. And of course, you can always ask more in-depth questions there as well. So that's going to be on September 26. And speaking of best practices, Matt's actually going to talk about that real-world example um, from CCI Mechanical. So Matt, take it away. Yeah, thanks again, Maddie. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to share this story about uh, CCI Mechanical. Uh, they're a mechanical design build contractor out of Utah. Um, they realized that they actually had gaps throughout their chain of communication. So from the office to the field, within project partnerships, and with the owner. And these gaps were creating a detrimental impact to the project schedule, team productivity, and the turnover and maintenance with the owner. Uh, so in order to address these, they, they needed a tool that they can easily access and easily use. And they decided to use, spoiler alert, Bluebeam Review Profiles, Markups, Tool Sets, and Studio Sessions. So the tools we went over today, among other features to improve the dialogue between parties within existing processes. And as a result, CCI was, has been able to save 50% off the old process by completely eliminating their design review meetings and also using sessions to allow for simultaneous drafting and design. And using a review's intuitive markup tools in the standard PDF file formats 
has helped ensure that everyone has remained on the same page. So um, by using Studio and sharing information through the cloud, they significantly reduce the timeline of communication. So it's really a fantastic story. Um, you can find out more by downloading the case study from the handout section in the uh, GoToWebinar uh, panel there. Uh, we also have a link available. Click on that link. It's got a really fantastic video that really documents their story in a lot of detail. So uh, it's really fantastic. So uh, back to you, Maddie. Awesome, thanks so much. And I actually had a quote to pull out here um, from Ian, the project manager over at CCI Mechanical. He said, we got our design out faster. We got our field to weigh in on all our design reviews using sessions, whereas usually we would call a design review meeting. So that expedited our engineering process. So we were so excited to hear just the, the benefits that they were experiencing over there and actually being able to take the time to see that it's making such a difference. So it is time for questions. So Molly, if you wanna jump on the line, I think we'll have some live Q and A. Great. Thanks, everyone. Um, definitely a lot of questions coming in, so please bear with us as we get to answering all of them. Uh, we will be sure to get to all of your questions. Um, Matt, a question that did come up a few times is, when would be the right application to use compare and overlay for single PDFs versus multi-page documents? Could you speak to that question? That is a great question. Um, we do have a batch overlay function in Review Extreme. Um, and you can also, when bringing in those files into document comparison and overlay, you can select what pages that you want to do in each one. So uh, the batch overlay functionality, though, will have some matching capabilities. So it will automate that a little bit more. But if you're just manually doing one at a time, um, you can choose what pages from each file if you want. Okay, good question. Great. Um, another question that came up, how would someone who doesn't own a licensed copy of review collaborate within a session? Yeah, so um, just as you saw, so if you download the trial, um, basically uh, you have your 30 day free trial, um, you'll be able to have the full extent of the program within that 30 days. So uh, that includes being able to go to the studio panel, creating that account, um, just tied your email address, and then uh, creating sessions and being invited to sessions as well. So I mentioned briefly that you can invite people to a session that, um, that may not have review. So if they download a trial or even if that trial expires and the markup tools go away for them, when they jump into the session, those markup tools will reappear um, so they can uh, collaborate just like any other attendee. Great, thank you. Um... Let's see, I had one more question that just dropped my mind. Um, the tools that you covered today, are any of them specific to Review Extreme or can you use them in all of the versions of Review? Yeah, fantastic question. So everything that I showed today is available in Review Standard Cat and Extreme, so you don't need to worry about that. I did mention the batch overlay just now in the Q&A, that is an Extreme only feature, but everything we went over today is readily available to you. Great. Um, I think that covers my Q&A portion. Um, so back to you guys. Great. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Again, if you are interested in going to XCon, we dropped in the links in the chat box there for you, as well as the training day on September 26th in Philadelphia. Um, we definitely hope to meet you. And there's going to be a survey at the end of this. So please fill it out. We'd love to know what you think. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye, Matt. Hi, Maddie. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate the time.